Okay, now that we've discussed potential flow and also some of the basic characteristics and nomenclature for airfoils, the next step is to figure out how to use these to solve for the flow around an airfoil and figure out what the lift for a given airfoil will be at some angle of attack. To do this, we're going to develop vortex sheet type solutions. I'll move through some of these preliminary details quickly. You can find more details in the textbook and in the written notes that are posted on the course website. So recall our vortex flow. Which was a two-dimensional idea. And now let's introduce this idea of a vortex filament. And this is nothing more than a straight line of infinite length. with vortices all along it. So it's taking this two-dimensional idea of the vortex and extending it into three dimensions. So this would be what we would call a vortex filament. strength gamma. Now, next imagine if we have a, a surface that consists of an infinite number of these vortex filaments where each filament has an infinitesimal strength. So this is a vortex sheet And that's going to look something like this. And let's join this together so that you can see that each of these vortex filaments are parallel to one another, though they don't necessarily lie all in the same plane. So that we have a three-dimensional surface, um, which is essentially a uh, extrusion of a curve in 2D space. Now, if you think of an edge-on view of the sheet, you'd see something like this. You know, if we call this end A and this end B, and you can imagine that all along here, I'm drawing them discreetly, but what we're actually saying is that there are an infinite number of infinitesimal vortices along this sheet, which has some length measured by this direction uh, s. So the small amount of distance along the sheet is ds. And if we consider some point P of X and Z away from the surface, then uh, then the radius vector from a point on the surface to P R 
at some angle theta. And the infinitesimal vor vortex here will induce some infinitesimal velocity dv at t. And the strength of this sheet, since it's now an infinitesimal strength, we'll call this small gamma, and it's not necessarily constant. So it's gamma of s. Okay. So this is the idea of the vortex sheet. Now, if we go back to the equation for the induced velocity field from a, a single vortex, we had v theta is minus gamma over 2 pi r. So then we can say that dv is going to be minus gamma ds over 2 pi r. And so this is an important, important equation that we'll use in thin airfoil theory very soon. And this dv is perpendicular to the radius r. So the total velocity at this point p will be the sum of the dv contributions from all the points on the sheet. Now importantly it's a vector sum, right, because this radius vector uh, will be different for each of these points. And since the dv is always perpendicular to the radius vector, you'll see that a vector sum will be needed to get the total velocity. So because of that, it's actually easier to work with the velocity potential. And so we could write instead that d phi is gamma ds over 2 pi theta. So then what we get is that phi of x and z, the velocity potential field, is negative 1 over 2 pi, the integral from a to b from one end of the sheet to the other of theta gamma ds. And this equation is very fundamental to the vortex panel method. that we'll discuss next time. Okay. So then the total circulation around the whole vortex sheet is going to be the integral of these infinitesimal vortex filament strengths. Now, this means that for a vortex sheet, there's going to be a discontinuous change in the tangential component of velocity across the sheet. The normal component is preserved and, and unchanged. So, what's important then is how to relate the delta in tangential velocity to strength. So you can think about this by drawing a picture. Here are our vortex filaments distributed along the vortex sheet. And if we draw a little control volume, there's some x velocity u1 on top, some other x velocity u2 on the bottom, v2 on this side, v1 on this side, and this has height, dn, and length, ds. Then the circulation around this contour is simply gamma equals minus v2 dn minus u1 ds minus v1 dn plus u2 ds. 
And if we simplify that, we get this u1 minus u2 df plus v1 minus u2 dn. And since circulation has can be written as gamma ds locally, so then we can write gamma ds is u1 minus u2 ds plus v1 minus v2 dn. So then take limit, take the limit. as dn tends towards 0. u1 and u2 become tangential velocities. Right above and right below the sheet. So then we get that gamma ds equals, since dn has gone to 0, u1 minus u2 ds. And this can, of course, be simplified a little bit more, and we can write gamma equals u1 minus u2. So the local jump in tangential velocity is exactly equal to the local vortex sheet strength. So then using this, we can develop a solution strategy for airfoils in inviscid incompressible flow. So if we have an airfoil with some incoming velocity v infinity, there's our airfoil, s direction is along the surface, and we've got the vortex sheet gamma of s along the surface. Essentially, what we do is calculate gamma of s such that the induced velocity plus v infinity will make the vortex sheet and thus the airfoil surface streamline of the flow. Then, once we have this distribution gamma of s, the total circulation is simply the integral of the sheet strength and the list per unit span is rho infinity, v infinity, gamma from the cut of Joukowsky theorem. But unfortunately, there's no analytical solution to this problem. So instead, we have to solve this numerically, which is where the vortex panel method come in. So again, we'll talk more about vortex panel methods next time in relation to the uh, upcoming mini project. Now, before I move on, I want to take a moment to talk about the physical significance of this vortex sheet approach. So what, what are we doing? Putting vortices on the surface of an airfoil? What does this mean, right? Um, it's not obvious. The physical significance of this vortex sheet approach is that we're modeling the rotational flow in the boundary layer of the airfoil. So there are large velocity gradients in the boundary layer around the airfoil due to the no-slip condition. 
and that flow is therefore highly rotational. What these vortices do is capture that vorticity introduced by the boundary layers and its effect on the flow outside the boundary layer. Next, Imagine uh, that the airfoil of interest is made very thin. So we have our free stream velocity and we have some thin airfoil and we want to transform that into the infinity and a vortex sheet. With gamma of s strength distribution. So because it's very thin, we can approximate such an airfoil with just one single vortex sheet. It's one-sided, so you don't need a, one sheet for the top and another sheet for the bottom, but just a single sheet will do for the entire airfoil. So then, when we calculate the strength, in combination with the infinity, what we get is that the camber line is a streamline of the flow. And because the airfoil is very thin, this is not too far away from what the solution would be if we had sheets on the separate top and bottom surfaces of the airfoil. So it's important to note that it's an approximate method. However, there's a major advantage And that's that we can get an analytical solution. And we'll discuss that very soon. But first, we need to think a little bit more of the physics of flow over airfoils.